This is season number 19 of Bass Talk Live with Matt Pangrak. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Aftco, Strike King Lures, Sunline, Big Bite Baits, Spro, X Zone Lures, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, Pro Guide Batteries, Beatdown Outdoors, Shoreline Boat and RV Repair, and Omnia Fishing. Hit him with the hook, Jeffries. PTL, coming at ya! Good morning and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live, where we are going to talk about bass fishing. We might get into some technique show today. It's been a it's been a minute since we've kind of dot dove diving dove. The my my command of the English language over the past week has really been struggling. I probably need to kick that. It's been a minute since we've uh, taken a deep dive into a technique. I think probably last week where Casey Ashley. And, and we don't, weren't even planning on doing that with Casey Ashley. And all of a sudden, we're 20 minutes into Casey Ashley on his 1 8th and 3 16th ounce green pumpkin zoom trick worm shaky head on his custom head and how he throws it and where he throws it. If you haven't had a chance to go back and listen to that, I had traded in the shaky head for the mid sized Ned and the drop shot, of course. And then after having Casey on, I have gone back and added the shaky head back into my arsenal for the 2023 season. That's how convincing Casey Ashley was. And, you know, once you win a elite series event and an FLW tour event and a Bassmaster classic, people listen to what you say. So shaky head back in the box. And I might be the same today with, uh, with a, a ball head and a, and a swim bait because for some reason, I have never gotten that utmost confidence in like the pro swimmer or a Kai tech or any of those kind of ribbed or smaller swim baits. Now I've caught them on it, but it's not my go-to uh, and fishing extremely slow and staying in one area for a long time is not my go-to. So today's guest long time, uh, you know, when I was doing, when I was getting ready for the show, I, uh, I said, holy cow, I did not realize. I figured that Jason Reyes had been on tour for maybe 12 years. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 16 years. 16 years as an, an FLW tour and uh, tackle warehouse pro circuit pro. And then crazy stats on Jason Reyes too. Top 10, 8 out of the last 10 years. Good stuff. So we will have Jason Reyes uh, on in just a minute. Hey, there's only four more days or three more days for me to talk about this. The St. Jude Break Your PB fundraiser, New Prague, Minnesota. I am flying in on Saturday, and then I'm flying back early Sunday morning so I can make the Super Bowl and watch that. But uh, New Prague, Minnesota, if you're anywhere in that southern Minnesota area, all proceeds go to St. Jude for the Dick Hiley uh, St. Jude Bass Classic that I'm fishing with Adam Bartuzek. All the Crappie Chronicle guys will be there. I'll be there. The Break Your PB uh, beer. They'll have a couple kegs of that there and thousands of dollars in prizes uh, in raffles. You buy raffle tickets. That's how I raise in money. Uh, not only on the ice fishing side, but also from AFCO, Pro Guide, Sunline, Denali, and Big Bite. So uh, I've had several of the guys DM me about. Uh, uh, about attending that 5 to 10 p.m. Saturday, February 11th. Come say hi. A shipment of hats and decals for BTO will be arriving today that I will be giving out at that event. So if you have any questions on that, New Prague, Minnesota, the Giesenbrau Beer Company, G-I-E-S-E-N-B-R-A-U, and then they spell beer, B-I-E-R, and then company, C-O. It's pretty much the most Minnesota spelling I've ever seen in my life. All right, let's get to today's guest. From Texas, where you're in Texas right now, right, Jason? Yeah, I'm. I'm at home in near Houston. That's where I live. All right. Uh so do you fish Conroe a lot? I actually went over and fished a couple team tournaments over there already this year, and you know it's starting to get a little bit of grass back. That's I, I, I go dabble over there when when it gets some grass, and I like to fish shallow over there. Pretty much, I don't know like all those locals. They have tons of brush piles and they catch big sacks doing that but we had a pretty good tournament over there we had 24 and change i guess finished second so uh good way to start the year i so i fished the bass nation championship there in 20 well look right there 2016 
okay. went down, spent a ton of time. That to me is an I've never seen a lake with more of a local advantage than Conroe. Like it's absolutely insane how many of the little nuances, how much of the stuff looks the same and how there's like little one-off things that the locals know about do and have planted. Is that a fair assessment on that? lake? That, very fair. I mean, there's, you know, the lake's full of docks and it's mostly all bulkheaded, you know, from the upper end down there's, there's some river fishing up, up North, but there are, you know, those guys have planted just about anything you can think of out there trying to, you know, put something on a side of a point or a, you know, road bed or what have you. So it's, it's got tons of brush in it. A lot of guys know which piles they live in and they have these milk runs that they get on and, and, you know, guys like Russell Cecil guys that have done good, yeah. at, you know, across East Texas. I mean, you know, I'm not even going to go over there and try to compete on a, on a deep bite against that guy. He's got, you know, 150 places he can run. So yeah, they, it's definitely, you know, turned into some of that. And now with live scope, I mean, they, they can, they can dial that in pretty good over there. It's amazing to me that there's any fish left in that joint. I'm not going to lie. You know, it, it really is, but I'll be honest with you. It's full of big ones. Like it's, yeah, full I know. Of them. Like it's you all see it on I mean, Facebook and it's like four for 29, three yeah, for yeah. 19. And you're like, what the heck? It's crazy. I mean, in, you know, there's a little bit of grass growing and they're going to, the water's kind of up now. So they're going to have a spawn. That's crazy. There's going to be some sight fishing. I'm sure go on. You're going to see, you're going to see that lake kick out some big stringers. There's no doubt. Uh, what is the name of that restaurant there that ever, that that kind of has like the decking that's kind of right the by the pop, ramp? I think it's like Papa's on the Lake or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's one yeah, of the yeah. cool uh, one of the cool kind of open bar walk in venues yeah, around the yeah, country yeah, yeah, that yeah. you go to where you walk yeah. in and you're like, ah, this place is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, especially if you like you know work out and wear a tank top. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what I mean? Like when the fishing <laughs> tournament's in town, there's like a couple yeah, places yeah, yeah. like you walk into the stump and like everybody, I'm not, yeah, I'm not comparing yeah. that to the stump people do not send the <laughs> hate mail messages. There is one stump and that's it. But I'm just saying like where, when there's a tournament, everyone goes, Hey, you want to go here? You walk in and it's just a bunch of out of shape dudes drinking beer and <laughs> eating pizza. That's right. Right. Usually in there, like, you know, uh, rain pants and a sweatshirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you want to split a picture? Uh, yeah, exactly. No. Do, do you do any of those? I've heard of all those, those, uh, there's some jackpots down in Texas that do like $500 entry fees or kind of higher entry fees. Like, I mean, Oklahoma here, we're talking like 40, 50, 60 yeah. entry fees, but aren't there like some high end jackpots down there that you can get into? I think they play for a little bit more money in Conroe than I play over here at Lake Houston. But even then, you know, it's a hundred, you know, a hundred bucks where like I talked to Crete and he'll be like, man, I'm fishing the Tuesday night or I go, Oh yeah. What does it pay? And he's like, Oh, not a lot. They don't want to play for more than like 20 or 40 bucks. So, you know, we're fortunate. They, they do have some tournaments over there where they get, you know, 30, 50 boats and, you know, can win, you know, three or 4,000 bucks. This has never made sense to me. And I I I think I heard of one and not, but why would you not have a five hundred dollar Wednesday nighter or Tuesday nighter? Two hundred and fifty dollars, two to hundred fifty dollars per person. And if you win, you win ten grand. Yeah. Hey, I, I I think it's I think you should. I mean, if you think about, you know, these same guys that are fishing locally, I mean, they have the same rigs and the same, you know, stuff that the guys on the tours have for, for the most part. I mean they're invested as well in boats and tackle and, you know, electronics. So yeah, why not? If you're going to run, you know, 14, 18 miles on a Tuesday night or why not go ahead and play for 500 bucks? I agree. I, I would love it. Pete's saying that there's a Thursday nighter on Louisville, hundred dollars, 40 to 60 boats. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. I believe Which it. I'm uh, just shocked that that means there's 40 to 60 teams that feel like you can catch a bass on Louisville and are willing well, to risk a hundred dollars. Yeah, that, that That's a whole nother, you know, I mean, you might as well make that a big bass event, you know, at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you get a bite. And most win. all the tournaments are one, like right outside the takeoff, you know, for that matter. Yeah. Uh, they've got a restaurant there too. Yeah. I think I might've ne seen that one. It's been a long time since I've been over Nikki there. Pete's? Fortunately. I think it might be Sneaky Pete's. 
I'm not sure. Anyway, James Biggs always gives me a hard time when I talk bad about Louisville on the show, but I rank, uh, like, do you, so like you obviously have your list, like what are your top three favorite lakes in the country? In the country. Okay. So like just your top three favorite lakes, you probably could, could rattle those off. Oh yeah. Real easy. So the thing is, is none of them are in Texas. Okay. So probably Smith Lake, number one. I mean, I, I, you know, I've had good tournaments there. I've had a couple bad tournaments, but at the end of the day, I mean, for some reason that one, like, you know, there's probably the only lake that I would ever consider like quote living on. Uh, another one that I really like is like Murray, South Carolina. Oh yeah. Uh, that's a good one. Um, and then probably, you know, after, uh, this past season, I, I really like the St. Lawrence river. Like I, I'm not really done that great there, but it's intriguing to me, like, like the current, the, the, just the massive body of water and long runs. And, you know, do you really have to run that far and, and all that stuff? I'm, I'm, I'm excited to go back there one day. I think it would, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm starting to kind of learn a little bit more about that. So I like the challenge of that. Plus it's crazy where you're actually like, I am in my bass boat with the potential to catch a seven pound smallmouth, And I just drove past a castle. That's right. And then there's a, you know, a five mile an hour current with a ship going beside me, you know, the other way, you know, it's, yeah. yeah, The hardest part for me on the St. Lawrence is being like, this is a tournament. (laughs) Right. Right. It's almost like a a, a tournament vacation, really. Like if you think about it, because, you know, especially for down here where I live, the water's like clear and there's, you know, you're, you're, you're catching these, four and five pound smallmouth at times. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's these giant cruisers and ships and there's hardly any bass boats on the water. It's, it's, it's just really cool. Cool place. All right. Then do you have a list of your least favorite lakes? Like places oh, that yeah. you just, you go, I have zero desire to do this, but it's on the schedule. And this is not an indictment to the, listen, I will say this cause I've got a, this is not an indictment to the town, the people around the town, the hospitality. This is just, a lake that does not suit you at all. <laughs> yeah. So one in particular that I think about, you know, up until you told me to, you know, pull out the gold chain, it would have been Harris chain, but I'm, I made a top 10 there last year, yeah. you know? So, Hey, thanks for the tip. But, um, it's probably your <laughs> fall of Alabama. I don't know why, but that one just, I don't know, man. It, if I see that on the schedule, I'm like, Oh, you fall. You know, it's just not one that, that, I get all that excited well, that's about. That's not good. I gotta go there in three weeks. <laughs> no, good luck with that. Yeah, thank, that's uh, thank you, thank you for that. That's, 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 that place, man. It's yep. it's tough on me, but uh, okay. I'll I'll give you another one. Um, probably Lake Travis. I mean, I, I you wouldn't think that, but when mm-hmm. I see it on the schedule, I'm like, really, like Travis. Like at all the lakes in Texas, you pick Lake Travis, you know, there's been a couple of big tour events there and in, in FLW and even uh, I think Bass Pro went there. So that's one that I'm, you know, I'm always scratching my head I at. I think the when, Elite when, when went there. there. That's yeah, a maybe it was the Elite Lake that, that's got yeah, stripers yeah, yeah, in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And I think like we went there in FLW a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's one. Uh, I'm really, you know, I'm also the guy that's like, hey, throw me a schedule. I'm not ever going to, you know, be the guy that's like, you know, I'm not fishing because of that schedule. So, you know, uh, another one that would probably be like, you know, uh, it used to be Champlain. You know, I used to hate the 32-hour drive. uh, But I've kind of figured out a way around that now. So, I. Gonna have one of my ship, guys. Do you do this ship and fly? No, man. I so so I got a guy. I, I got a guy that works for me. Drives, makes deliveries, and whenever Champlain's on the schedule, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna have you drive my tr- boat and truck to uh, New York, and I'm gonna fly in, and then I'm gonna get your ticket, and you come on back. And that's yeah. So when Champlain's on the schedule now, I'm like, I got that figured out. I like so it. It's, it's it's really not even that big of an expense if you really think about it because you drive from my house it's th- like 30 30 32 hours Holy well cow, yeah. two days of that i mean by the time you get there you need a day just to chill so 
I can fly there in three hours and, and, you know, I'm also running a business and things. It just works. So mm-hmm. it makes sense. Yeah. Have you ever just messed around up there for like a week around tournaments? Because if you basically start at like Cleveland or whatnot and just work your way up, there's like two or three little Lake Erie deals the, the yep. that Oneida, all those lakes. It's a great place just to mess around in. Oh, I would, I have not done that. I I would really like to do that. I mean, that sounds like a great time where you, where you take like a, say maybe like 10 days and you just yeah. start traveling East and you just stop. And if, if it's not that great, then you can move on to Buffalo yep. and then you move. Yeah, exactly. I would love that. That'd be, that'd be great, but that's a good idea. All right. Uh, before we get too far in, I do want to mention, so I made the MLF fantasy fishing group league yesterday. So this is okay. This is uh this is a public service announcement because there are t- like 28 people that are going to get ho- I think you can sign up later but there's 28 people that probably need to go- they need to go back in and join the actual Bass Talk live. So when you sign up I'm going to get a call from Joe Pogger and he's going to be like no 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 that was wrong. So I'm going to try to get this right. When you sign up for Major League Fishing you make your create create, create your uh create your account or whatnot and then you have to go up and it says uh, and and there's a little like menu bar it says free to play fantasy fishing games you have the abu garcia predictor game the bass pro tour and the uh tackle warehouse invitational so obviously you want to click on the invitationals because that's it's separate just because you pick your they have their run completely separately so then you have to join a league. Well, Bass Talk Live has 371 members. I'm taking a screenshot of it. It's the only time we'll have more than Tackle Warehouse because they have 325 members. Uh, but I had to make it public. So yesterday's league, if you signed up yesterday for the Tackle Warehouse in- Invitationals on Fantasy Fish, you have to go back in and re-sign up with Bass Talk Live because I didn't realize that I already had one made that was private. All I had to do was click it public and it was still good to go. So if you were in one that didn't have over 370 members in it, go back in, sign back up. I signed up today. Uh, and then also you have to go in separately to the Bass Pro Tour. And then you can join the Bass Talk Live group on the Bass Pro Tour. I did not have a Bass Talk Live group last year because I didn't realize they were separate. I do realize this year also on the Elite Series side, the BTL group is up and running. So there's the Fantasy Fishing Public Service announcement. Gotcha. Jason, do you realize how, what? Sounds confusing. No, it is. But do you realize how ridiculous fantasy fishing sounds to someone who is not in the world of bass fishing? I would, I would imagine they were probably trying to figure out how that worked. Yeah. Uh, Like it's comical. Like what do you, you do? Wait, what fantasy fishing? Oh Yeah. yeah, dude. You go in and you pick these dudes and you can like win prizes. And you just get like a like you're an alien look. Well, I've had plenty of fantasies while fishing, but you know they usually don't turn out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, something that I found interesting, and and that I said is is you like to fish slow, and you also like to fish like a light line swim bait. Is that a fair yeah, assessment? Yeah. Am I am I fair overselling stuff. the swim bait? No, 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 I really do. I mean, I like that and and it, and it definitely has its place. And, and I happened to catch her show with Casey and he, he talked a little bit about some of those things and, and, you know, some of the, there's some of the stuff that he talked about that I like totally agree with, like, and you, you, you were like, Oh, well, why not this? Or why not that? And he was telling you just basically no, like I do it this way and I don't really care about how anyone else does it. So We'll get into we'll, I'll, I'll go over the, like the swim bait stuff real quick and then we'll get into maybe like a shaky head and how it kind of relates. So probably it, it started for me back when we were fishing the Beaver Lake tournaments and the FLW tour. And when the Kai Tech first came out, uh, you know, fish kind of never seen that. You were able to mm-hmm. fish it over deep water through timber, stuff like that. So I was I was throwing it in. I had my best success by downsizing my line and a lot of guys would throw it on a spinning rod because they could throw it far further with a lighter, you know, weight and fish it over deeper water. Well, I just could never get the, the rotation of the reel always felt like I was winding it too fast. Cause that's that the key is to wind it slow. Um, and I was throwing it on like an eighth ounce head 
just a regular ball head style uh, three yacht hook on a whether it's a 2.8, 3.3, 3.8, and I switched to like a bait caster, and but but on a rod that had like a lot of give, and by doing that. Uh, I, I, I put a like six pound test line on it. And a lot of guys are like, golly, man, you're throwing a six pound on a bait caster. And actually, if you have the right rod though, the right setup, it, it, it's, you know, assuming you're not going to get wrapped around docks or, you know, some kind of structure, it's very manageable. You know, you back down your drag, you know, you, you don't want to, you know, tighten it too tight, but I mean, I've caught a ton of fish that way. And, you know, lakes like, beaver martin smith hartwell a lot of the the spotted bass lakes and things like that is where it's really shined and well i'm looking at this and you have uh top tens on amistad on smith on cherokee on beaver i mean these are historically clear very clear water finicky lakes around the country correct and you know the swim bait was a, a part, a part of that, you know, definitely at Smith, definitely, you know, I, de- I don't think I made a top 10 at Lanier, but I finished fairly high. I was kind of hanging around there. Uh, but all that plays, I mean, it, it even played at Cherokee some, and then I switched to an Ed, but that was, you know, that was part of the, some of the top tens that I've made have, have been with a little Kitech swim bait. I mean, picking out small areas, fishing really slow, covering different depths of the water column, uh, trying to figure out, you know, will a fish come up for it? Will I have to slow it down, speed it up, things like that. But it's definitely something that a guy can spend a lot of time with and and dial it in a little more than just making a cast and wind it in. in. It, at first, I mean, kind of like you, you said, man, I haven't really dabbled with that too much. Well, at first, I was kind of like, you, you expect any time you tie on something new that you're going to have instant success. Five casts, 10 casts, 15 casts, and you're like, you're already starting to question it, you know? And I just had to push through that with, with, with that technique. And then after you start getting a couple bites, you're like, man, that's a fish I would have never caught on any other bait, probably. So you feel like you're tapping into a new, you know, a new technique and a new style of fishing. So that's kind of what was intriguing to it for me. All right, uh, are you cool with like actually breaking it down? Because I have found, I, f- I like to fancy myself a finesse angler, but I have found the lighter line and the more finesse you go, the more attention to detail matters and the more your setup matters. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, are you cool with actually diving in with that and explaining how that system works? Sure. Okay. Uh, BTL on a Tuesday, Jason Reyes, we will be back right after this. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler design function and performance in mind, nothing on this new offering was compromised and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96-inch wide-body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry-leading design coupled with tournament-winning performance. The Puma STS from Basscat. Feel the rush. Hey guys, Gerald Swindle representing the AFCO Hydronaut. This is the jacket I love wearing when times is tough. And I'm talking about the weather, not the fishing. The jacket, what I like, I got a double cup right here. I can seal up the bottom of my jacket because when you're fishing, you're holding your arms up. You're bad about getting water runs downhill. Everything bends good. I'm long arm. Look, it fits very comfortable. My arms are flexible. I've got the speed hood on, pouring down rain. I can get everything zipped up. One thing they did is they made plenty of pocket space. If you ain't got no pockets in a Hydronaut rain suit, you just got too much stuff from the water man brain that's 30k baby 30 times the reason you ain't gonna get wet super warm if it's cold in the winter time you put on your hydronaut you're gonna be a much more comfortable person if you don't want to just look sexy at dairy queen 
where are you hydro knot? We got it from small to 5A. Most rain gear does not come in that many sizes. You got waist adjusting straps. We can make it fit you. No matter what the environment is, we want you to be comfortable. We want you to be dry. You got to check it out. It ain't going to let you down. Elite Series Pro, Daryl Gleason here. My Pro Guide batteries keep me going on those long tournament days and long practice days. Always plenty of juice, never fail. The best part about Pro Guide batteries, it's the people behind the company. They have over 40 years experience in the battery business, keeping all of us fishermen out on the water longer, catching more fish. Check them out at ProGuideBatteries.com. What's up, Bass Talk Live fans? Brandon Polnick here. And ever since I won a couple Bassmaster Elite Series events on X-Zone Lures, I've been getting a bunch of questions of what makes them so special and different. And really, the truth is, it's in the details. The little details, things like no cheap fillers in their plastic. That gives you more lifelike action, more realistic and vibrant colors. But don't just take my word for it. Go to www.xzonelures.com and check them out for yourself. All right, welcome back. We are talking with <clears throat> Toyota Series and NPFL angler Jason Reyes, which is this little sampling as to what we're going to get into in the second half of the show. But before we went to break, uh, we were talking about uh, we we're talking about they're calling it now the bait finesse system or something like with all these like light reels and rods that are designed to be bait casters for light line. Like, are you just are you using like these specifically designed bait casting equipment for a light line or are you taking traditional bait casting equipment and downsizing it? I've taken just traditional stuff. Like, I mean, that, I'm glad you mentioned that. So r real quick, I'll just explain to you. So where I see guys, I can't necessarily say make a mistake, but you gotta, you gotta have something to throw this stuff on that you really like, that you really like. Okay. Like you don't go just pick up a cheapy or a cheapy spinning rod or, you know, a cheapy reel 50 bucks. I mean, it's, it, there's a difference. Okay. So get you something that's good, something that's, you know, you, you kind of get what you pay for sometimes in, in fishing equipment, but I, I'm using no, you know, just a Shimano basic uh, metanium reel on a, a Loomis 852 uh, medium action rod. So it's a, high, it's a thousand dollar setup. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. You know, I'm, but I'm not even saying that you can't find something comparable for less money that, you know, I'm not saying that that's, that's the end all there. You, you can, uh, I mean, you can throw it on a, put it this way. You can throw it on a Corrado with, uh, you know, a, a, a right. half expensive rod. You can do it, but are you going to go to Academy and get, you know, spend a hundred thousand on a bass boat to try to find a fifty dollar rod and i mean i see that happen yeah. all the time no i mean it's, it's not gonna work with a black max is what you're saying yeah yeah probably not so not that there's um, anything wrong with that but you're no, trying but, to throw real light baits where drag is incredibly important yes, where school it, revolutions where where in, your your tolerances are incredibly minimal for this to work effectively because it's not like an ounce thing that you're just lugging out there Right. No, like you're not going to be able to accomplish that with, with a reel that's not capable of holding six or eight pound line casting at long distance with light, like yep. an eighth ounce or three sixteenths ounce head. It's just, it's, you're going to spend time picking, <laughs> picking, you know? Yeah. Picking and seeing one up close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then it's going to end up in the rod box and then you're yep. done with that tactic. So, yeah, I mean, it, it but once you once you fish with it on the right equipment, it, it, it starts to starts to feel good and, and you know gain that confidence. The same way on a spinning spinning rod. I mean, I you know a guy that the average guy, what's he got? One, maybe two. And if you're only going to have one or two, even more the reason to have something good, in my opinion. Okay, what rod are you using for this when you're throwing the the ball head and the and it is a Kai Tech. It is this either the Swing Impact three three or three eight primarily is what you're using yeah. on on a ball head, correct? Correct. Yeah, I mean I dabble with the. It started with the two point eight and then oh I, wow, I feel like yeah yeah the two point eight was you know some of those top tens on Smith Lake that was all two point eight but three point three I kind of you know since that came out that was like the later version to come out I, I've I really like that one it's kind of the in between perfect. Uh, size for for spotted bass lakes and even smallmouth things like that so i really like the 3.3 .3. 
Okay, and then the ball head that you're you're putting on that three point three. I mean, there's, two, there's a couple different ones I use. I, I have a, a homemade one that I make that's got like a three aught light wire gami hook on it, and it's a double collar. But uh, Kitek actually makes a head that is really really good. Uh, one of them has like a little weed guard on it, and and that works good around any kind of docks or timber, uh, uh, cables, things like that. But mm -hmm. just the one that's without the weed guard, I use a lot. You know, over deeper water. Uh, and it's a tungsten down. head. Yeah, it's a tungsten head, so it's, it's the profile on it's great. The, the head is kind of like a grayish color, so it matches any kind of shad. Most all of those swim baits are some form of shad color. Uh, I got a couple colors I like, like bluegill flash a lot, uh, pro blue. Uh, you don't need to buy, you know, 14 different colors. Get you two or three and play with that a little bit, and I, I think that's plenty. Just have enough of them. Yeah, that you, you, they, uh, so Kaitech has figured out the same thing that, uh, Yamamoto did, which is if you make a plastic that works well, you can mess with it till it gets soft enough. So if one looks at it wrong, it rips and you have no issue <laughs> and bucks to get five more. It's the most brilliant thing ever. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, the Cinco started that and then, you know, Kitex kind of came behind that as well. And you're right. I mean, you catch one on it and you're like, well, that one's done. You toss it on the floor of the boat and you go to rig up another one. Uh, but yeah, it, at the end of the day, though, when, you know, you're out there fishing on the tour and, mm -hmm. you know, two packs of baits a day, if you're catching them, it's not, you know, it's not digging into your pocket too bad. Uh, that's why, that's why you were saying, Hey, why not play for 500 on a Tuesday night or right? I mean, eight, eight, nine, $10 a pack of, for five swim baits. Uh, I've never been a guy that super glued them. I know a lot of guys do that and I'm, and I get it, but there's just always been something about me putting super glue. That's the same with me. I plastic. feel like there can't, can there has to be some sort of smell. Like if I can sit there and yeah. smell it, there has to be something that they can smell. Now I know right. that it might not affect them, but to me, I'm like, I can smell that. Like, what if that, right. what if that fish comes up yeah. and is like, uh, that's, that's something yeah. sketchy. And I, he follows I, I'm it with and turns you. Away. Totally with you on that. And another thing is, is like, can you even use super glue without getting it on you? I mean, is it even possible? I, no. it ha it, I always get it on. I mean, if you're going to touch your bait. It's it, not only that, but if you even have any on you, what are the chances that, anything even comes out when you go to yeah, sleep. It's always, it's got to have one brand throw, new out of it. Yeah. Pack. It's always like on its side in there and then it's rock hard. Yeah, exactly. And then, and it's like a white, just crusty, you know, and you're like, you're squeezing on it. And you're like, well, I must be out. Well, I don't know if I've ever even used it. It probably dried up. So yeah. I, I'm not big on the super glue. I, I'll just, you know, I, I use a little double collar, uh, a head and it seems to hold it fine i mean every now and then you'll get you know two three fish out of it if they eat it a little deep and you know they don't tear it but yeah it's it is it's what it is. kind of the cost of doing it yeah all right we kind of passed over this but this is important because there's a ton of different colors you said you keep it simple what i have pulled up now mm -hmm. is bluegill flash if you're going to pick up yeah. three or four and and there's a uh, the Kitech is what I uh, is is the one that's probably started it all. I remember I was actually with Jeff Crete the first time I ever yeah. saw him, and we were at a at a little we were at the tackle shop that had like no tackle in it, but it's right underneath the bridge on the left at Oneida, going up the river. Okay, in that right. grassy bay. Okay, and he pulled in there, and he's like, "Oh man, I heard these things have these." Kai tech swim baits he's like these are <laughs> and you know how jeff is you know he's got yeah, the yeah. different he's like these are these are the deal these are the, the oh, deal it, whatever he these throws are the, the deal. deal right <laughs> and yeah. he went in and just like bought like a thousand dollars and they yeah. literally oh, yeah. it was like minnows leeches some jig heads some crawler harnesses and like a, a rotating thing at kai techs well i'll just say this you know i'm i'm really good friends with crete like pretty much talk to him every day and he's cost me a lot of damn money you know because i get that call hey dude you gotta buy this this so is convincing. the deal i'm telling so you man convincing. i'm telling you oh yeah and if you don't you almost feel shamed into buying yeah. it you well, know i told you <laughs> i told yeah. you oh, it exactly. was a deal i mean yeah 
and that's you get you somewhere get. And you get somewhere and he's like will you have any of this and i'm like no and he's like oh you're an idiot you know and i'm like yeah you're probably right but uh <laughs> but you know what he's taught me a ton and a lot of these things that we're talking about i mean he's he's the i'm telling you have you, you fished with him oh, have yeah. you ever fished with him? oh okay. yeah yeah i've been offshore one time and i've probably fished for i've fished probably 15 days with them like we've done okay. a murray tournament and on that little lake by his house and yeah, yeah 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 so here here's my take on crete right like he is he can find fish and dial in fish faster than anybody i've ever been in the boat with like he's that good but sometimes what happens is is two three days of practice day off later i mean he's you know, he gets to thinking, right? Like it, you, you put him on the lake for four hours. So He's the best. Let me say this. You, you just said live on air that Crete's biggest problem is that, is that sometimes he thinks. <laughs> no, man, I'm telling you, like he knows stuff that like, yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah. like, wow. You know, like he's like, oh man, it's going to be a jig thing. I can already tell. And I'm like, and then it turns out to be, and I'm like, Dude knew that like four hours into the practice, but you know, by the tournament, sometimes he's already off the jig thing and now he's on something else and then on something else. So, you know, I always tell him, man, why don't you just practice for like one day? You know, you know that way you don't get, you know, you don't get caught up in anything else. Mm -hmm. The guy's amazing. Like most everything that I've learned about all this light line, I'll tell you one quick story. We were fishing at, at speaking of it, it was Lake Travis in a TTT tournament long time ago oh i don't know oh five six seven somewhere in that range and uh jeff reynolds and crete were were in the tournament and we were in practice it was hot it was in the summertime actually crete won the event okay i'll, I'll just go ahead and tell you that well they were they were over there and there's this one giant boat dock and they were skipping uh shaky heads underneath it and i basically just bought a spinning rod so you know i'm like i i, I I just stood on the outside of the dock on the front deck of my boat, just staring at what they were doing and just totally embarrassed to even make an attempt at the kind of cast they were making, you know? And, yeah. I, and then, you know, I remember being in a Marina and I ended up throwing a fluke and catching the fish. I did, you know, casting a bait caster with a fluke. There's no telling what I could have caught had I had, I had any game. I mean, they have, okay. they had like good game. But anyway, I mean, I, I knew real quick that I had to uh, start learning uh, how to do that. Um, if I was going to fish across the country. Well, especially, I mean, you were, I mean, you fished the FLW tour in the heyday of what was called the shaky head tour. I mean, if you looked at oh, yeah. the events you went to four or five out of the six was like, Hey, here's where it's going to be one. And this is the shaky head. It's going to be, it's going to be, right. you know, or not maybe one, but, but top 10 at least. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I came close to winning a beaver. I think I finished second with a shaky mm -hmm. head over there. So, but the first time I think I went to beaver, it, I didn't even know, you know, I had no game. So I had to learn, I had to learn pretty quick. It, it was something that I spent some time working on and you, you know, when you know that you're behind, behind the eight ball there. So you, you either make a change or you, you just go flipping. Right. And, and mm -hmm. that sometimes doesn't work. So, uh, I, I had to buy some more rods. Yeah, I mean, uh, half of the schedule was was a finesse shaky head in a poor. Like, listen to this year, like like right around like 2010, Table Rock, Lake Norman, Fort Loudon, Telco, yeah, Washita, and Gunnersville. Like that was your schedule. Yeah, that was the. Uh... That was back when I, I realized I have to do something, you know, because brush hogs and, and yeah. 1.5 crank baits aren't going to cut it. You know? There, so. Here's 2000, 2009, Table Rock, Lake Norman, Beaver, Champlain. 2008, yeah. uh, Lewis Smith, Norman, Beaver, Teleco at the Detroit River. Like yeah. you guys were, were kidding, man. <laughs> No, man, I mean, if you didn't, if you didn't own it, that's why I say, if you didn't own a spinning rod, like, 
how are you supposed to compete out there on with that schedule? I mean, no, knowing what I know now, you know, back then I'm like, you know, I'm like, I, I, you know, we'll all just go do this. But I learned real fast. You better you better be able to swing the and, and you know, you'd be amazed at some of the guys that you wouldn't think would be like the worm shakers. Like, I'll David tell you Dudley. some of them like Dudley. How about Morgan? I'm, that guy can shake a worm with the Wait best of Wait a second. Drugs. It- a Andy prom. Moore, Andy oh, Morgan, guaranteed. No, guaranteed. no, I promise you. I, With the spinning rod, oh, this guy he just game. doesn't talk about it because oh, he likes no, the, that's not, that's he not likes the, the wider, the wider oh, persona. Yeah. The, I'll tell you another one, Mark Rose. He can shake a worm, trust me. Yeah, he can do it. No, so Andy Morgan, oh, I, you think he's got more than two spinning rods in his boat? Uh, he might not, but he's damn good with those two. Really? Okay, I'm just I telling you, he, he'll shake that. a worm. Oh, yeah. If he has to, he will. Okay. Don't we, did wrong, top five with Casey. we did a top five with Casey Ashley. I can't, okay. I can't remember exactly who was on it. Let's do shaking a worm. Your top five right now. We could do, I don't know. You want, let's just go, you know, recent hit because those guys in the eighties, like, I mean, what do you do with Harold Allen with a six inch V and M a piece of lead and a tree like turn? A, yeah, I don't even know. Like, if you can, I mean, he's good. I would call him like the Texas rig worm yeah, yeah, master. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So let's make our top five because I'll be interested to see because I feel like we left Larry Nixon out with. Uh... Definitely. He's got to be in. Okay. There. I think I Casey mean, he, and I left he's Larry transformed, Nixon out. by the way. He used to be the Harold Allen style Texas rig, but now he's the Ned rig shaky head. He, he's he got mega game for okay. sure. You'd have to. I, I have to have Creed on there. I mean, hell, he showed me how to do it. So, I mean, okay. he's he's good at it for sure. Uh, probably Wiggins. I mean, I know Casey Ashley okay. touched on that. I mean, he got to put him in there. I mean, he's a guy's like a super stud with that. Um, I mean, I, I'm going to go with uh, – Mark Rose? No, nah, I, I – I'd go Cody Meyer before Mark Rose. Oh, that's a good one. You know, I mean he he might have he might have been drop so- shot in some of those fish back in the Beaver Lake days, but he he was catching his tomatoes, fish there. tomatoes. Yes, exactly. I mean, if, if we're, we're we can't dial it into what size worm, but I mean he was yep. throwing you know that kind of stuff. And then would you put Casey in there? Oh yeah, I mean that. Okay. Even see some of the the guys that are that are really good at it might not have had to been good at it from the get go. You know, yeah. Gerald Twindle's another one. Oh yeah, he'll that shake is. the worm with the best of them. You know, he's another one that you'd probably have to you know throw in there. Did Casey say anything in his interview that you could go back and listen to it last week, or anything that you like disagreed with, or that you do differently? Because if I just remember rundown, it's it's either an eighth or a three sixteenths. It's never a screw lock. It's the same exact thing. It's one worm, and that's pretty much it. So the the one thing that he mentioned, I, I agreed with pretty much all of it. Yeah. But the one thing that he mentioned was the whole screw lock thing, right? Like, okay, if it, let's just say I draw, I drew you in a tournament. You're in the back of my boat. And you have two spinning rods with two spot remover, say, heads with worms on them. I'm just going to be like, man, I should have used you in practice. You know, like you're going to shake off more than you're going to catch. With a screw lock. Yeah, in my opinion. Okay. Not not even trying to. You're going to try to catch them, but you're not Ex- going to. Explain why a screw lock basically acts like a weed guard. <laughs> Because that's what it is. <laughs> so, it to me, you know, Crete and I played with this stuff forever, you know, and it, it, trial and error. I mean, it, I'll I've used one before, and I'm not going to say that you're not going to catch a fish on it. I'm not going to say you're not going to catch, you know, a big fish on it or whatever. It's just tried and true. Attaching your worm to the to the hook. If that's the case, why wouldn't we do the same thing with a Texas rig? Just saying. I mean, there are there are some that you can do like a screw lock yeah. in, but ninety eight percent of yeah. it is with is with the so, straight shank or the offset hook. It's because the bait you, collapses against it and keeps the bite bigger, right? Correct. And and not only that, like if you go back to when kind of the shaky head era was at its highest, 
there were not a lot of companies that were making uh, hooks that size with light heads. I mean, you had to get like crappie jigs and things. I mean, that was out yeah. there, but not like the, bass tackle. So number one, the number one back in the day was probably the screwed up jig head from Reaction Innovations, and it had a spring on it. Yep, it did. And then, but but really, like some of those old Kalen stuff were probably yep. were, were, were what I would have probably went to before I went to that. So okay. Uh, and then and then once you know tournaments started getting one on that, you started to see companies come out with their own versions. And uh, the lighter wire hook is the is definitely the key. That's one thing Casey mentioned. He didn't touch on it a whole lot, but if you have a hook for and this is for spotted bass deep water uh because i mean think about it if you're fishing in 30 foot of water and you're trying to like you know hook a fish you, you gotta kind of kind of move it a little bit and in my opinion if you're fishing like a smith lake i'm always going to do my best to just throw straight fluoro six pound line not go to the whole braid fluoro leader yeah. another comp yeah hey, deeper if if okay. I'm not fishing that deep, it's it's okay. But man, there's just something to it, man. It, 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 and he even touched on that a little bit that he'll throw, you know, straight fluorocarbon. And it's if you're throwing anything over eight, it's just too much. And I I, I watched a couple of your shows, and you mentioned the guys going to like five and things mm -hmm. like that. I I believe all that plays. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to throwing some five. I the brand of line I throw, I don't know that they make a five. Maybe they do an Atatsu. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. you know, six seems to be good. That's interesting because a straight fluoro seems to be going by the wayside, but uh, it I does. Andrew Upshaw on last year and he throws the really light stuff on straight fluoro. You did Casey yeah. touched on it. You're talking about it. It doesn't. Yeah. Not yeah. Why do you I'm think sure it, you you think it makes thing. a difference, but why, what, what, what is the reasoning behind it? Like, why do you get more bites in certain situations on straight fluoro than on the braid to fluoro combo? So let's just go back to what you're trying to accomplish. So you're throwing a shaky head on a, you know, a drop off from say 12 to 18. Just let's, let's go with that. Okay. Really what you're trying to do is you're trying to scratch the rock, right? I call it scratching. Like you're just, that's why you, you'll hear guys, they say they hold their rod up high. So you hold it up high and you're just really trying to like crawl, scratch, when when you have the braid, it, it doesn't have any stretch, so you tend to pop it without even trying to. Even you know, in wind and things like that, and you get a bow, you're always trying to feel. To me, the the natural fluorocarbon seems to be the best all around for you know what I the the real old school shaky headers to me are always would, would probably all tend to agree. Okay, let me see if I got this right. This is horrible. But so there's 12 to 18. The straight yep. line is the fluorocarbon where you're going with the natural fall of it and the other one with it is when you're lifting it up you're you're kind of not not s staying in bottom contact with it and you're just kind of skipping yeah, four and five and foot, you know. Okay. It starts popping real bad. Especially if you get a little wind and you go to pick up. I mean, you pick up with the braid and it, it wants to just like Float you know. Away. Okay. Yeah. I got it. That's good stuff. Will you go heavier than a three sixteenth or are you an eighth and three sixteenths too? I'm an eighth and three sixteenths, uh heavy wind maybe a quarter uh that would maybe make me go there uh i have thrown a, a a swim bait on a quarter at times to just to get it there get it down there mm -hmm. uh but mostly eighth and three sixteenths i'm gonna always go i think casey touched on it too eighth over three sixteenths if i can get away with it if, have, in, 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 you know always have you found with live scope and forward facing sonar that you've learned a lot more about how the fish react to bottom baits like Ned rigs and shaky heads over oh, the past sure. couple of years. For sure. I mean, sometimes they'll want to go down for it and sometimes they won't. Like if you get, get it below them, things like that. I've, I've definitely noticed that you have to play, you have to play with that and how it, you know, the fall, things like that. Uh, well, you know, a lot of times you need the fish to to move on the on the forward facing sonar, sonar to to clue you in to 
how they're acting. You know, just you might see them, but you, what are you really seeing? You know, you see a fish, but when you can see fish moving off the bottom, now you can start really dialing into what are they, you know, how much are they moving? You know, we always hear about the, about the guys catching the suspended ones and the ones they trick into biting, but the ones that are kind of, you know, Creed always say like, Oh man, look at, look at them. They're crawling, they're crawling. And, and they're literally like swim up above the rock and you'll see, you know, you'll see them and then they'll go back down. So you kind of like, you want to get in that rock and just scratch it over the top. That's kind of how I, you know, I've always thought it would work best, but sometimes not easy to do. because We always want to fish so fast, you know, like it's hard to do some of these things and quote, cover a lot of water. You know, it's really difficult. Which is so, why just it suits your style. It comes in yeah. nature when you're in an area that you have confidence in. You have no problem spending two, three hours without picking up the trolling motor and just making sure that you're covering everything as long as you feel like there's fish there. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I feel like as well that the, so that when you show up to a lake, like you're going to go to an open or whatever, and you're going to show up there three, four days prior to the tournament starting and you say, say you find fish, right? Well, where did you find the fish in the window? Because there's a window, right? They're not going to stay doing the same thing for six, seven, eight days. They're gonna, there's going to be a variance of what they're doing, weather, things, all that changes. So did you find it in the, you know, in the front side of the window, the middle or, or, the, or the tail end? And to me, that's half the puzzle right there is what did you find and where is it at in the window? You know, you're on the front side of it, back side of it, or is it just the tail end? And when you can start figuring that out, it lets you make changes that need to be made instead of, hey, man, I caught them here yesterday and they're not acting the same way today. So you see a lot of guys win tournaments on day four doing different things than they did on what days one, one and two, even, you know, three days, three. And I struggle with that personally, like. I, I do pretty good sometimes one day, two days, three days. Then on final day, it's like, man, my, my stuff's kind of dying off and I <laughs> need to make a change, you know? Uh, but yeah, that's what I've always struggled with, with the opens. Cause I've gone into the final day a couple of times and I'm like, you know, I'm always like, like two, three, four, five pounds out because that's just the way I, I fish. I'm, I'm more of a consistency to get there. And you know, you can't win it if you're not in it. That's my thing. Right. That's right. also, it's also really hard to win it if you're 12 pounds back, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a different, that's a different conversation, yeah. but I have struggled with going, dude, I, I know that what I have probably it isn't, I, I mean, I, I know in my gut, it's not as good as it once was. And you're always trying to fish where the fish are and where what's going. But I mean, you know, going out there that it, it it's not, it's not mega sec potential. Right. And you're like, well, but then you also are like, but dude, you know, I just beat a, a 220 other guys and I'm in the top 10 and I'm just a couple of good bites away. So why would I scrap everything to go try to catch? So then I, I struggle in my head between, do you just go out randomly hunting and then you come in with two fish and you realize that it was tough on everybody and you're like, well, damn, I could have scratched out 13 pounds and won it. Or do you go catch your 13 and then you come in and everyone has 16 and 17 and you drop a couple spots and you're like, why don't I have a set to be able to go out and try to find new fish? It's, it's a conundrum. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we've, we've all been there. Like, and, and you know, like if you've had some experience out there in tournaments, you know, when, when it's, quote dying right you you feel it you you can sense it it's just hard to you know sacrifice everything you've done for two three days to walk away from it because you're like man i'm not leaving I, i'm staying there till the end and how many tournaments are won off of one area for four days these days not very many i think you yeah. said the hair chain was the other day you know Dude, that was nuts. That's crazy. I mean, what, 100 yards or 50 yards or some crazy? No, like, it was 100 yards, crazy. and he fished 30 yards a day. That's and crazy. he would he he said if he touched the trolling motor, yeah, they, it was done. So obviously those were like high-pressured bed fish that knew what the hell was up, and once yeah. they, they sensed it or heard it on their lateral line, they would just – this. I'm just assuming this. I have absolutely yeah, yeah, no yeah. idea. But they yeah. would just kind of ease off the bed and let the – the guys go through there and burr, 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 and then they just kind of ease back. And this guy would just drop his poles 
and just relax. And he said it was 10 minutes until after he got up there that, that it even settled down. And then if, I don't know if you've ever been over there, but I mean, there's a billion reads and they're all kind yeah. of different. I, I, I mean, dude, he said he would hit individual ones with the weightless Cinco. I mean, I don't get me wrong. That's, that's just my game. Like I, w- I would love to, to find or, or fish a tournament that worked out that way. But I mean, that, that's kind of like a one in a, you know, thousand chance of that happening. But the question is, is it wasn't that a, a, a co-angler tournament too? Was that a yeah. Toyota? Okay. Yeah, I forgot to ask. It's about interesting what you to do see what the guy, guys behind him caught. You know, if you think about that, because we always talk, oh man, you know, I drew this guy that's fishing like fifty <laughs> yards back and forth all day. What did they catch? You know, like it, it'd be interesting hey, to know. I, I didn't look at the, that. I fished the opens in one of the years, the first time I did, and I had a buddy that fished with me. And he's the guy who kind of got me into tournament fishing. Like when I was 14, he's he, he, there was a guy, and after he quit the club, he was like, hey, you can jump in with me. So he taught me a lot. He's actually fishing, yeah. fishing him as a co-angler with me this year. Owns his own plumbing company. No desire to fish in the front, but he's really good. And he drew a guy on Table Rock that literally tied off to a dock for four hours and said, hey, there is a big school of spots that live under this dock, and they're not here now, but when they show up, it's game on. And sat there and did not catch them, he said, legitimately for four hours before he's like, I guess they're not – like tied off. Like they right, – you right. might as well have dropped them off on the dock. dock. Yeah, yeah, they could and, do it right there from the yeah, – the, I mean, so that, I guess, constitutes fishing slow. Fishing yeah, slow yeah, is yeah. I guess that. I guess that does get labeled as uh, slow fishing. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, like I say, there's there's a time and a place when when to stay, and there's a time, time to also leave. And guys that can figure that out you know, after having success over multiple days, like I I fished the Rayburn tournament last year, the one I think Michael Neal won. I literally like day one, I was fishing, you know, within sight of the guy, you know, I'm obviously doing something totally different. He's on, you know, fishing some uh, sonar, forward facing sonar pattern. But my point being is he did that for a couple of days and had, you know, was doing really well. And then He's gone and he's he's not even there. The ha- half of the second day's out finding another fish. I mean, there's there's multiple ways to do it, you know, for sure. And some guys have figured it out. I think why that's why we're going through a process of repeat winners right now. Guys are figuring out how to win these multiple day tournaments, like you say, by setting themselves up to get in the top ten or what what have you, and then coming up with a second game plan how to how to finish the job uh did you by chance listen to uh kevin van damme's interview on mercer i did not you, you gotta what go did back you, and did you listen learn anything? to that one yeah, yeah it was it was him setting himself up in tournaments so there was that that streak where he won like four angler of the years like eight through 11 or something like that mm-hmm he knew that on a lot of fisheries once he went there the spot was done if anyone else right. saw him there if the fans saw him there and he also knew that if he went to one of his good spots early it was done because he couldn't go back to it on that same day so he right. would set himself up he talked about one event on kentucky lake where he drove 45 minutes away from any other waypoint that he had like literally drove away from all of his stuff waited until like two o'clock didn't have anything in the box waited until all of his cameras uh, chase boats and spectator boats went and then on the way back in hit one waypoint for 30 minutes and came to the way in with 28 pounds Jeez. and he knew that if he had hit that in the in the morning or if it had like that that he was toasted right like he was done because right. the locals and everything so he would talked about how he had to literally know like what his rotation and game plan was for four days because he only got one shot at each spot and if he did his rotation wrong or his spots wrong because of how many spectators he had following him and and the other competitors seeing him that his tournament would would be gone right let's see it see that's kind of what i was touching on but that's next level stuff that the majority of guys even including myself sometimes don't even get get in a mindset of that you know of, mm-hmm. of basically 
predicting how it's going to go. I mean, you, you know, it, it exists, but to, to find it and to, to be think like he had to obviously catch enough fish to even be there. And then now he's there, he's already thinking probably on day two, how he's going to, you know, put the cap on it. Yeah. The, the other one is that, that always sticks out to me is a Jason Christie, uh, 2013 i believe was the year when he won on grand remember the lake was way up in the bushes on that in june yes uh and the fish should have been out but the water came up and uh, i remember interviewing jason after that and uh he said that that spot was you know his dad and brother or whatever uncle uh, his the christie family's good he said that he had skipped that spot in a dozen tournaments for 20,000 a boat team tournaments, BFLs. Cause he didn't want to have anyone see him there. And he wanted to right. make sure that when he caught them there, it made it count. So he saved it for the hundred thousand dollar tournament. And I, he's got a quote out there that says, yeah. Hey, you know, I've had this spot for 15 years. He goes, if I'm, if I'm going to blow it out, I might as well do it for a hundred grand. Yeah. And then, there, and there it was like, uh, I, I couldn't do that. Like if I'm fishing for a boat and I knew I could go Jack, 24 out of this stretch of willows like i don't have the self-control to be like oh, there'll be a bigger yeah. one down the road i totally relate to that i would be i would i would burn it on the tuesday nighter probably because so <laughs> so and so and so was gonna go in there yeah. anyway or, or whatever you know yeah. find it by accident yeah all right, uh, we're going to take one more break of the show. When we come back, I mentioned it when we came back from the previous break, MPFL. Jason yeah. Reyes, one of the guys who's been around almost two decades on the FLW Tour and the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit now, the Invitationals, making a little bit of a switch. Still staying with MLF, fishing some events over there, but but one of the uh, one of the big-name guys that's making the move to the MPFL this year. So we're going to talk about that when we come back. Also, I'm quite proud of it. New Shoreline Boat and RV commercial coveted hot to BTL. Uh, they got one down in uh, in Austin there, Jason okay. Reyes. So All if right. you if you ever come in hot to the dock, ding the corner up, get in a little little uh, cable rash. That's my big <laughs> thing. Is you get that the those stupid cables. The one the one right on the back corner of the boat. Exactly. Like, right, yeah, I know that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the that's the one that you're like, oh, man, is you know, can I sell it like that or not? Yeah, the the cable <laughs> thing. Uh, yeah, Austin, Kansas City, Tulsa, and then we're also going to have uh, Brock Edmire, who is the GM of the Tulsa store, in in studio here to talk about. So, like my old ZX190, Jason, I had mm-hmm. some, I had some some deep dings in it. We'll just say that. And yeah. I'm still fishing out of it, but it was in the, on the hull area. And I'd never even thought about it. Well, I met Brock like a long time ago, uh, 2015, whatever. And when he hopped in the boat, he was like, dude, uh, that's not good. Cause he had just started working for the fiberglass. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, that's going to catch. And that's going to delaminate your boat. Oh, like yeah. you, you yeah. And I'm like, what? I'm like, it's just a hole. And he's like, no, like you don't, you don't want to run with it like that. He's like, you might be fine. He's like, but if it catches it, he's like, it's putting stress on it and it's just going to peel back eventually. And I'm like, really? And he had this like mixture that he did and he put on it and he's like, you're good now. So he's going to come in and talk about like what you need to get fixed when, how little things that you can do. Well, he's definitely, he's not lying. I had one, I had a rock at table rock one year and I was, you know, it was kind of like one of those you in the middle of the Creek or river or whatever it was. And, De- it it delaminated, so yeah, it happens. You don't well, think it's going to? It, no, it it does. Delam- did it delaminate <laughs> that same day or a little bit later? No, no, no. It takes a little time, but yeah. when it starts happening, it happens real fast. Anyway, so keep that in mind. Uh, yeah. During, during this commercial, they're on for for the twenty uh, twenty twenty three season. Excited to have uh, Todd and all those guys on. So it is BTL. On a Tuesday with Jason Reyes, we're going to talk what you're fishing, where you're fishing, and why when we come back for the final segment of BTL right after this. Shoreline Boat and RV, dock rash, storm damage, collision repair, that deep scratch or gouge from trying to access that secret creek. Shoreline Boat and RV can get your prize possession back in mint condition and looking good on the water, fast. All repairs are done in-house, so they're able to get your boat or RV back to brand new, quickly. 
All Shoreline's work comes with a rock-solid warranty. Find out more at ShorelineBoatAndRV.com. Kansas City, Austin, and Tulsa. Having confidence in your tackle while on the water is one of the main things to success, in my opinion. In the last couple of years with Denali, I've had just that. From anything from spinning rods, casting rods, tungsten products, even now to casting and spinning reels, I have the confidence to go out there and get the job done and know that all my equipment is going to handle it and do it just the way I want it. The thing about Denali is you've got great quality products at a great price point, so make sure you check them out. Are you looking to install your own fishing electronics? The solution is the Bass Tank Power Harness. It takes the guesswork out of installation. No more voltage issues or interference. Designed by an engineer so that you can get professional results right there in your own garage. Installation done right with the help of the Bass Tank Power Harness. You can feel confident knowing that your installation was done right. The Bass Tank Power Harness. Give us a call or order yours today at thebasstank.com. Get the best patterns backed by tournament data. Start by finding the best 10% of your lake. Know exactly what to look for and what to throw. After that, you just put them in the boat. Try the Deep Dive app today. Look at that beast right there. Have you considered purchasing new electronics for your rig? The type of mounts you choose to protect your investment should be part of the decision-making process. No matter if you prefer one, two, or three graphs up front, Beatdown Outdoors has a solution for you. Adjustable, versatile, rigid, and made in the USA. What's your ultimate electronic setup? Check out the full selection of Beatdown Outdoors products by visiting beatdownoutdoors.com. I'm the kind of guy that never leaves a house without a pocket knife, and Gamagatsu's come out with the EDC series of knives. EDC stands for everyday carry, so whether you're on the water or off, you can always have it with you. The best thing about it to me is that assisted open feature. With this D2 blade, you've got it right here at your fingertips, so if you can't find your scissors, you need to cut a knot, you need to cut your braid, you've always got it. Make sure you check it out. Never leave home without your Gamagatsu EDC knife. Preparation is key to success. And that preparation starts well before you ever hit the water. You're only as strong as your connection to the fish, and your line is that critical connection. Confidence in your line every minute of every day on the water is a necessity, and failure, it's not an option. Sunline makes the fluorocarbon, nylon, and braided lines to give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. The great thing about the new Sensation Soft Plastics from Big Bite Baits, heavily scented, super soft, buoyant, comes in seven great new shapes. I've got a couple of them of my signature series, the Cliffhanger Worm and the Ram Tail Craw. Great for a flipping jig, football jig, swim jig, all that. Several other great shapes. Really excited about it. We've worked over the last year. Catches fish all over the country, and I think it's going to catch fish for people everywhere you try it. The Spro Little John crankbait has been around for almost 15 years, and it is one of my go-to crankbaits whenever I need a fish in the boat, so you can never have enough new colors. That's why Spro is coming out with a handful of new colors, including Pearl Shad, which has this bleached out white look, but it's got this pearlescent, really, really pretty. We've got Copper Shad, which looks amazing in the water. It's got that purple flake on the back, really, really pops in the water. And then if you want some real pop, we've got Sparkle Shad, nothing but sparkles all over this thing. And then last but not least, we've got the Matte Sexy Shad, just a really different looking color for a crankbait. So you wanna give them a little different look, that Matte Sexy Shad is definitely the one to go with. All these colors are available in the original Little John and the MD. All right, welcome back. BTL on a Tuesday. I'm not going to lie, Jason, the uh, Michael Neal with a pocket knife kind of scares me. Yeah. I mean, hey, you never know, right? You might never know when you might need that. Someone yeah, comes, I, comes and tries to, you know, steal your whole, you just pull out your pocket knife. He told me uh, one time, he told me if I ever went to Chickamauga that uh, he'd have his dad arrest me. <laughs> That's it. He's like, he's like, he's like, I'd stay away from the Dayton boat dock if I were you. <laughs> I like, I'm like, what, what have I ever done? And he just keeps saying, you know what you've done. And I don't know what I've ever done. He just, he, 
Yeah. He's one of those quiet guys that's kind of intimidating probably to fish with. Like, you know, I could see, you know, you, if you cast it like over his line, he could just pull out his pocket knife and just snip your line. I would see him so, do that. And then, and then I could never see say him anything. go, I could, yeah, no, I could see him go sucks. That sucks for you. Doesn't it? You going to yep. do anything about that? You going to yeah, do anything yeah. about that? Man, what are you going to do about I that? I didn't think so. I didn't yeah. think so. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the, he's, he's probably one of those guys that, you would probably have to poke him real hard to get him mad, but oh, yeah. he did. You know, dude, uh, in, in all seriousness, no, legit good dude. Incredibly oh, smart. Yeah. The most underrated business savvy top tier angler on tour by far with what he runs, with what he does behind the scenes, with the brands he represents and the amount of product Crazy. he moves. Michael Neal is in the same category as uh as Wheeler, as Polinick. He's the same age as those guys. He just doesn't yeah. get the quote publicity because he's not right. flat he's not flashy yeah but he's a, he's I mean, a when you have a name guy. but when you get the name like the real deal i mean do you yeah. need to be flashy you know no, when, when no. you have that name no the checks cash all right uh yeah. 76 anglers a hundred thousand dollars for first place 20 paid places one in 3.2 gets a check Second place, 15, 14, 12. Fifth place, uh, 11,000. Sixth through 10th, 10,000. And 7,000 all the way down to 20th. $5,200 entry fee? That's correct. We're talking about the National Professional Fishing League now in its third iteration and its third season. But this thing is a go. And you're hey. on it this year. Yeah. So uh, I'll give you a little play-by-play -play of how that how, how I decided to do that. So obviously you mentioned I've fished FLW for quite a number of years and I've even fished the Bassmaster two or a couple before that. So all those years that I fished, what, what was kind of the driving force of why I, why I do this was the whole points race championship, you know, and with that being gone, it was kind of like it lifted the way the game was always played for me, you know? So I stopped and thought, well, man, what are we going to do? You know, what am I going to do this year? And the MPFL, like you say, it was new. Uh, I feel like they were, you know, getting into something that a lot of people would have said they would have never, you know, made it through the first year, second year, yep. whatever. Yep. So I I decided early on that, I, that that's what I was going to do. And obviously they, you know, made some last minute adjustments on the payout and, and then it started – getting more traction and now here we are a uh, hundred thousand for 76 guys in the smallest field i've ever fished so looking forward to that i mean i've always fished a field of 150 to 200 in the flw tour so 76 people on a body of water for you know three days sounds pretty good with 20 paid at a hundred grand for first yeah. like this is yeah. The reason that there's not a 50 angler waiting list on this was bad timing by oh, the oh, NPF. 100%. 100%. And, and they're fully aware of that. And, yep. you know, they, they, they've made comments that they want to, you know, continue to move forward and do this again. So I don't think we're going to see a field size like this in 24. So it's a good year to take yeah. advantage of a smaller field size. This is what's impressive to me about the, the MPFL, Jason. Obviously – you come in with a $5,000 entry fee in, in year one, and you're going to have a lot of naysayers. You're going to have a lot of people saying, Hey, you got MLF, you got bass. There's not room for this, this third one, but they get through that first year. And I think it's a good product, but then they have the, the debacle about the championship mm -hmm. and the payout. It is a league in a fold or not. They, they somehow weathered that storm, which was both a, a PR, a logistical, and an angler trust nightmare. Because that's the biggest thing. This whole thing is based on angler trust. Oh, They're for-profit for businesses. Bass, MLF, NPFL, these are for-profit businesses. You are putting your trust in that company. Right. And they let they let a lot they let the anglers down after that first year. But so I thought, I mean, then you had a, I mean, even I was part of it. I was like, man, I was rooting for him. There, there's no way you come back from a canceled championship and this many ticked off anglers. But guess what? They came back from it. That's right. So they still had a big field. A lot of businesses, you know, mine included. I mean, you start it and you and you have this 
the idea of how it's going to go. And then you hit a cur- you know, you hit a bump in the road and you, you can either fold up or you can persevere and it, and they've chosen to do that. And I think it's, it, it speaks volumes that, that they were able to, you know, put this out there this year and continue on. And it, we, we let's be honest, we're in a, a time where everything's kind of leveled out in fishing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, a new brand, a new, you know, some, a, a new show in town. I, I kind of like the idea. Um, they're, they're throwing a guy like me a, an opportunity to fish under the same structure that I've always fished mm-hmm. rather than to have to fish the opens or the uh, tackle warehouse invitational. So I, I'm looking forward to it, man. I I'm, I'm can't wait for it to get started. Hey, I'm going to throw this up there because this is insane. So it is a 76 angler field, six qualifying tournaments. I love that they spread it out. Like you said, you're a yeah. business owner. You got a bunch yeah. of stuff going on. It's not like, hey, guys, I'll see you in three months. And then they act like fishing doesn't happen after August. Right. Two in the right. two in the spring, two in the summer, two in the fall. You can still have a freaking life. No entry fee championship with a $250,000 purse. And they're hey. still doing live streaming and they're still doing the trailer, the trailered weigh-ins. Correct. So, you know, and, and, and I've never fished one, so I, I can't, you know, say how well it's run, but I've heard a lot of really good things and, and I'm sure you have too. So I, I'm, I'm all for, you know, seeing what it's all about and maybe they can grow this thing into something, you know, spin it off some kind of way, you know, I think Holy it's going to be great. There's also a $20,000 progressive angler of the year winner. That's right. Listen, everybody that I've had on the show that's fished the MPFL, you know, Soka, yep. Kevin Rogers, Taylor Watkins, I've had some others. Uh, they all say that the way that it is run is the best as far as the actual physical running of the event, the launching in the morning, the taking out, the communication is the best, the best run yeah. tournament circuit they've ever fished. So I think you'll be right. in it. It's a hell. I mean, like I said, it's a hell of a deal and it's amazing. All of the obstacles that they've overcome to where you right. look at this, what they have coming out right now with 76 anglers. And you're like, dude, this is in professional fishing. This is your best case scenario. Right. I, I mean, it's, uh, a hundred thousand. I mean, granted, I know you can win a little bit more, obviously, with some bonus money on a, on the other two tours. But as far as without, you know, boat brand uh, stipulations, it's as big of a payout as you can win just, yeah. you know, anywhere. So I'm really struggling, Jason, with how I figure out how I word this, how the invitationals filled that field with those guys that could make financial sense with signing up for that deal after it was gutted so deeply. Man, I, I couldn't do it. I, I mean, it, it was obviously an option to me. And, you know, I, I'm a fan of all the organizations. I, I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, uh, biased to one. But uh, I just couldn't see the travel distance and the it, it, for, for the Opens. It just didn't make sense. I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you stand to gain? So uh, if I'm going to take a week away, I want to at least say that I had an opportunity to win X, right? So yeah, that's yeah. Opens and invitationals are not, I could understand Toyota series and you're fishing some Toyota series trying to yeah, qualify yeah. for that championship. Yeah. And it's at the championships at table rock, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. There you go. I, now you, yeah. <laughs> what we just talked yeah. about. Yeah. Kind of like that, that place quite a bit, you know, uh, that time of year too. But you have a chance to make some real money in this deal. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would think if I can go out and and you know be consistent like like I have over the last few years and 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 avoid any stumbles that, you know, hopefully you just give yourself a chance on day three. That that's where I go back to what you mentioned before. You're like you can't you know you can't win if you're not in position. So, you know, days one and day two, I think you have to do a do a good job of putting yourself. In, in a winning position as many times as you possibly can throughout the tour. I like this. Uh, you got Saginaw Bay, you follow Oklahoma where you can get, you can get spinny. You can, you can get the old yeah. finesse yeah, the, Lanier, uh, Lanier yeah. and then Amistad yeah, Lanier. with the championship. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, the schedule, it's several lakes that I haven't fished. Like I haven't fished Wright Patman. I haven't fished Saginaw Bay. I haven't fished, Amistad in years. I haven't fished uh, Santee since like the 05 Bassmaster. Oh, so wow. I, I, but I, but I, I like the new, you know, go somewhere new, uh, 
kind of aspect of it. I'm, I'm game for that. Uh, Pickwick. I mean, I've been there several times, so hopefully get off to a good start and, and see how the whole season goes, but the championship at Amistad, I mean, that is a, uh, it, it's not like close to my house, but it's a lot closer than it's going to be for some of those guys. Yeah. Uh, anything else you have going on? Anything you want to talk about social media, new sponsors for the season, anything that comes on that's coming on board? Yeah, I just switched to a Phoenix boat. Uh, I've been in a Ranger a really long time. So, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, obviously I, I, you know, I went that direction and it, it's, it's a great boat seems to be so far. I haven't had to have, have it out. I haven't had it out very many times yet, but, uh, everything seems fine. It's all rigged up, ready to go. Uh, Reyes underscore fishing is, is the Instagram. You can check out some stuff there. I need to do a better job of that. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the season, man. It, it's, there's a lot of good lakes. Uh, I think I'm going to fish the Northern, uh, uh, Toyota series just because I love it up there at that time of year when it's a hundred where I live. Uh, and you know, that's kind of my plan so far. I, my, my son's playing a, a lot of baseball. He's really into that and, and pitching and stuff. So the, the extended season from the uh, MPFL helps with that. Keeps the spring a little more open. Mm-hmm. Doesn't clog up the spring of uh, baseball season. So it just works for me. Uh, kind of want to, I kind of wanted to hit you up and see if you can, it's been a few years. So what do you think about running it back? The fish and chips? Oh my god! You gosh, know, dude. you can do it, man. Like you could do it, but let's throw, what if we threw a spin on it? What if we played poker and you had to like wear tournament gear from like 2000 or below, like lots of embroidery. You remember like that? that? Yeah, like the tan vests. Yes, were those great? When you look yeah. back at some of that stuff, like how about Van Dam with like the tracker down the side? Ooh, that was, that was, I liked, uh, I always liked the winged V Triton jerseys. Dude, the pit crews, the pit yeah. crew jerseys. Those yep. were horrible. The iconic, I mean, I would have to think the most iconic patch jersey would have to be the Ranger across it. The red oh, yeah. ranger yeah. across yeah. it with the with the black and yeah. white tournament jersey. I remember when those yeah. came out because then remember yeah. everyone, it went. It didn't just go to die sublimation, and it. it I I could be right. wrong here, but was it not Amar? Vol- it was. It went from that, and then it went to oh look, this guy's got like, this guy's got two buttons, and it's a pullover. Yes. Right. It yes. wasn't completely yes. down to where now the logos yes. weren't weren't kind of cockeyed like a baseball uniform. It went to that. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I have a I have one. I break it out from time to time. It's a zip up. You like the zip up? Like the, the biker? Zip. Like the biker? No, like like the uh, like the chemical plant. Uh, zip up uniform the old school roland martin larry nixon style i got where you. it's jumpsuit the jumpsuit the jumpsuit yep, is yep, what yep, i'm yep. Right now. yeah i feel yep. like Tim and it literally a has jumpsuit. a bassmaster tag on it yeah oh the tag is bassmaster it, ha- it has, says bassmaster on the tag Ooh, that's oh, yeah. fancy tim horton wore yeah. that in one of the classics a couple years ago i think yeah yeah i think he did he, he broke too. that out. yeah he had to break that out but it's always good to revisit that kind of stuff you know, like those were because those, those were those were the days, man. Yeah, like, Clay saying will it's we ever to... will we ever see a tournament where we go special one off tournament, no electronics? I would like to see an all star weekend. We've done an all star tournament, but I would like to see an all star weekend where you have a skills competition. You have a deal where the fans get get on the water and fish for a couple hours with the guys in the all star. We've already had the voting. You have you have a one day uh, matches against those guys where everything is streamed live. I mean, an all star weekend. I think for the uh, elite series or the BPT yeah. would be absolutely phenomenal. I did too. I, I think but you that, could have the old yeah. school. I mean, you could have them all do their old school stuff. I mean, look at every other sport. Now, obviously the only reason that hasn't happened and they, they used to have the all-star weekend. Uh, I've actually literally got a Toyota trucks all-star week Decatur, Illinois sign on my wall right there. They obviously right. didn't make a ton of money on it. 
because anything that well, they do is is because of money. So if it was incredibly lucrative, I would think that they would have an all star weekend. Well, not yeah. I mean, you have you have the owner or part owner or whatever of BPT that owns a NFL team. Like, yeah. why not bring some football players out there? It can't be that hard. I mean, they only play like four months out of the year. I would love to see it and then throw your old school, have a no electronics derby have, I mean, you could do so yeah. many things over three oh, days yeah. and it's only a 12 guys. That's right. Yeah. So anyway, that, You're I think that, that. There, there should be more of that in fishing. If, if we're gonna, you know, if we're mm-hmm. going to somewhat plateau with the, with the payouts, well then let's, let's generate some things elsewhere. You know? I agree. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think it would also be good to have, to to do the old TTBC style again and have it. And I know there's oh, a lot yeah. of switching and stuff, great. but yeah. I mean, dude, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of pride over on the bass side and there's a lot of pride over on the BPT side. And, and those guys have all known each other, fish against each other, been friends are still friends, but you still take 15 and 15 and put them up against each other. And there's enough, I just had a show yesterday with Pete Robbins. There's enough beef there where it's not oh, yeah. going to be, oh, well, we didn't just catch them. Like there, it's going to be no holes barred. Oh, and it, and that's that's what we we need a little bit of that, you know, yeah. and good fun for sure. I mean, there's and, and in pure talent. hatred, like bring oh, it, bring it in, like where you're not yeah. hatred, but like pure competition, right. where you're like, dude, right. I do not want to freaking lose to these guys. Well, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you imagine the noise that's talked on a football field or a basketball court between players, and then they go mm-hmm. have a beer after. Like, yeah. why can't it be the same for fishing, right? Yeah. And, and the, did you did you ever fish the TTBC? Yes. Yes, yeah. I did. I mean, at uh, Lake that, Fork. The, at Lake Fork. The coolest thing ever. They had like cans of things of beer back there, and that and oh, all of cute. the deal. And it, yeah, you're fishing for a, a quarter million dollars, and everyone took it seriously. But it was such yeah. a great atmosphere for that. Oh and yeah, probably the most looked forward to tournament for any of those guys that qualified for it that there has been. Oh, everyone loved it. Everybody that participated in it loved it. I mean, you go to an event and there's like Toyota four by fours on an off road track Mm -hmm. off to the side, big tents and sponsors. It was was great. I mean, I think we need more of that. I think COVID kind of threw a kick in that, but uh, I mean, we're, we're for the most part past all that. We need to get back into doing some things like that again. I think for those who don't know, you've mentioned it a couple of times about uh, running a business, just Mm -hmm. what, what, uh, what kind of, so I own, a, I own a, a manufacturing distributing company here in Houston, and we service grocery stores. So your Kroger, HEB uh, type grocery stores here in Houston and Dallas and, and service them with non-food type products, whether it be anything from mops and brooms to housewares to uh, socks to hair accessories you know, all that stuff you see hanging on the sides of the aisles and displays and hats and just all, all mm-hmm. kind of importing a lot of goods and things like that. So yeah, how I got about you, 40 I, employees. I always wonder how people get into the profession that they end up getting into. Like, like how does what end up in that, in that yeah. game? Yeah. So I ended up, my dad was into it. That's how I okay. got in. And okay. I mean, he, I started at a young age. I mean, I, I tell a story sometimes that, uh, um, you know, he used to drive around in like a, you know, like the UPS style trucks, the step vans. And I would literally sit on a bucket in the truck and he kept all the merchandise in there. And we would just be going down the freeway with the door open and I'd be sitting on a bucket. I mean, now they'd have helicopters on you if that, if there was a nine year old kid driving around, <laughs> in a death truck, you know, like it, 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 it's, it's yeah. crazy, but he got me into it and it's something that I've, I, t- I took to and it was sales and, and, you know, he kind of, taught me a lot about it and, and made me work hard. And, and I appreciate that and still do today. So, uh, I'm actually leaving after I get done with you and I'm going to my office to show some NFL or I'm sorry, NCAA hair accessories to a Kroger buyer. So that's, I mix it all. I make it all work between Hmm. family and kids, baseball and work and fishing. So I like it. Uh, I got a couple more photos I want to throw up. You good for that time? I don't want to keep the Yeah, yeah, no, meeting. I'm good. All right. So yeah, no, I, I, anything I we talked about today, I've gone back and I've double checked on on Jason's profile and he's not kidding. Look, there's a shaky head. 
look at look at how yeah. that thing is re- i mean that's exactly what you talked about i mean that's the this right here is the deal right like the way yeah, that, that that's it that's a double collar and and it's you know a three aught gami hook on an eight ounce ball head that's it all right and then if you you scroll uh you scroll further up in your in your profile there is one picture of you with the frog but yeah, yeah. every now you know, and again you gotta there it is from yeah, the front it there it is yeah. from the front view there's the yep. the, the spinning rod yep. on it yep. and the reason that these are all in is because it means that you've been kicking everybody's butt on them but then hold on there's one that's uh there's one i gotta show 100 percent. all right there's there's the cinco <laughs> there's the cinco yeah yep. what was with the def leopard hat I know you wore that for a while. That you were like you kind of got well known for that for a minute. So 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 I, so I wrapped the boat with a with Def Leppard. Yeah, I mean, you probably find that too. But so I did that. You know, it's one of those things where you're like, if you make something mandatory, like I'm kind of like, well, why is that necessary to make it quote mandatory? I get it. I I get the image you're trying to create. But at the end of the day, I mean, these these boats, I mean, they make them that way for a reason. And then we go stick the same decals that are already on the boat on top of the wrap. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I was like, hey, you're going to make me wrap my boat? Well, I'm going to wrap it like this. You know, that's kind of so how that use, went. So did you have to clear that with Def Leppard? <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm not, yeah. I, I get stopped at the gas stations from time to time, and they ask me if I'm part of the band, and I just like I'm the I'm the new two arm drummer. But did you have to clear that with Def no. Leppard? Like you didn't have to do anything no. like legal to be like, hey, Def Leppard. The way, like, I'm a- well, here's the deal. The way I thought of that is like, well, what would be the difference if I had a decal on the back of my truck that said Def Leppard on it? So do I? I the, to answer your question, it's no. That's fair. No. Uh, could I get any trouble? Maybe. I don't know. You now, know, I like, do know of a, an angler who has received, like, I do know of an angler out there who has had wrapped boats where they got, like, legal letters that said, "You're uh, we please unwrap the boat with us. Like, we right. did. And, 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 and if, and if, <laughs> That's if, why if, I if Jeff Leppard that. called me up or one of their representatives and said, hey, unwrap yeah. the boat, I mean, what am I going to do? Unwrap the but, boat. But I mean, it was a Jersey day, Shore and... deal. Oh, like, you know what? Well, what where you remember when uh, Mike the situation. The boat then. You know, do you remember yeah. when Mike the situation was asked by, was paid, paid handsomely by Abercrombie and Fitch not to wear Abercrombie and Fitch on the Jersey Shore? Because it did not match with their brand. So he literally yeah. was paid to not wear Abercrombie and Fitch. So he got paid for it. Yes. So he got paid to not wear it. So I always thought that there would be like a reverse. There would be a way to reverse engineer that in fishing to where you're just like, you don't want me to wear your stuff because you know I'm going to do dumb stuff this tournament. Pay hey, me man. 10 grand and you will stay out yeah. of this debacle. <laughs> and I won't. I won't wear it if you pay me. Yeah. Not. Tell me how we can get on that level. Are you even going to yeah. wrap it for the MPFL or? No, no. Okay. No. It's not mandatory. I got you. All right. Last image. There it is. That is the setup. Absolutely. What that was uh, it. What you were talking yeah, about. That was there. That's back from 2018. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's for the most part, simple, a little bit harder to implement, but uh, it is definitely effective. It was a hell of a show, man. I had a great time today. Yeah, I did too, man. It was great. All right. I, uh, you got anything else? Man, not really. Like I say, I want, I just want to go out there and, and see what the MPFL is all about. I'm excited. Uh, it starts off in about, you know, 30 or so days and I'm just looking forward to it, man. It, it's, it's going to be an opportunity to fish in a much smaller field. And if you really look at it, the lakes are big considering for yeah. 70 some boats. I mean, oh, you, gosh. Won't see a, you won't see anybody out there. It'll be like <laughs> out there by yourself. Yeah. yeah. Imagine so you I'm, fall out Oklahoma with 70 boats on, you could fish 70 <laughs> boats and you fall a cove and yeah, still like have water 70 to fish. bridges on that yeah. lake, much less. Yeah. So yeah, if Saginaw Bay, Lanier's huge, uh, Pickwick's large and uh, Santee's obviously big. So there's going to be plenty of, water for everyone and we shouldn't run into any you know on top of people and 
Uh, the other thing that I really love, and I, I think you would agree as well, fishing the opens for two days with a small cut, everyone fishes three days. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel if I travel to an event for a week, at least I know I'm fishing three days, mm -hmm. you know, guaranteed. Yeah. So, 100%. like that. Yeah, that's good like stuff. That the, the cream always rises to the top, I believe, is the is the word that would, you know, the more you fish, the higher the law of averages for the good anglers. I would agree. I mean, it, 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 even if you have a little stumble, you got, you know, some yep. time to make that up. So yeah, I, I can say I, li I like everything about it. Uh, it's going to be something new and fresh for me. So looking forward to it. Yep. I've always said if, if there's probably, you know, 10,000 guys who could beat KVD in a one day tournament. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And now, if you, yeah. if you fished 15 consecutive days against him, that number <laughs> is like zero. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it was probably zero after like seven or eight, but yeah. yeah. Law yeah. of averages. Yeah. So uh like I say I like I like everything about it. Looking forward to it. Uh those guys seem to really be hungry to make this a go and 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 advance it into through twenty three and into twenty four. So that's what that's what's exciting. All right, Jason. Take care. All right, man. I appreciate you having me on. All right, see ya. That was Jason Reyes. Really enjoyed that. I've known Jason for a long time. Not like uh, best friends with him. We've done the fish and chips. I agree. We do need to bring the fish and chips back. That's a logistic thing with Jeffries. Um, I don't know. A everyone who's ever fished the fish and chips, part poker, part bass fishing, 50% uh, split on your poker and your bass fishing overall champ got 20 grand invitation only. A lot of guys brought a poker pro. Uh, there's a lot of guys, you know, like Kyle Welchers who fish. Uh, and have played poker uh, professionally uh, as well. Yeah, it needs to come back. Uh, it does need to come back. All right, some updates on what we got going on the rest of the week. Tomorrow, Wednesday, Chad Morgan Thaler, retired uh, Bassmaster Elite Series and FLW Tour Pro, big time in Florida. He's going to be on to talk about all of the tournaments that are going down in Florida and then also talk about uh, what he has going on along with Dave Mansu, Brian Snowden, and a couple other people there at Table Rock as far as educational uh, trips and weekends. Uh, I think I might be a part of some of that stuff uh, too uh, going forward, but a lot of cool stuff going on with Chad. We will check in with him. And then uh, I also talked with uh, Todd Klein, who is going to be on uh, next, next Wednesday, the 15th, uh, to talk about his win at Havasu and the whole surfing thing um really cool dude there uh and looking forward to getting to know him but uh, i think like i said if you are in in the minnesota area that thing is coming up this week all right this has been another edition of btl bass talk live chad morgan thaler tomorrow big thanks to jason reyes today learned a lot from today's show we'll probably learn a lot about florida from tomorrow's show we'll see everybody then later